Hi and welcome to this week's Supply and Demand, Forex and Gold Fundamental and Technical Analysis for the week starting the 5th of November. I hope you all had a great trading week last week. And uh, let's get into the uh, the fundamentals for the week ahead and then some technicals. So the uh, RBA, Reserve Bank of Australia, is the next G10 central bank to provide a policy update in the week ahead. Australian economists and the Australian rate market participants are both expecting the RBA to deliver another 0.25 basis point hike, which lifts the policy rate to uh, 4.35%. So that should be positive. And I say positive, but that should appreciate the currency if they do. Um, but there's always a risk that they may not. So um, if they don't hike rates, I think it's on Tuesday, um, announced that they are, are hiking rates, then I think the Australian dollar is likely to sell off quite uh, dramatically. Um, so let's see what happens uh, then. So it's definitely some market moving news if you are trading the Australian dollar. Uh, market participants will also pay close attention to comments from the Fed and the Bank of England officials in the week ahead, uh, including uh, Chair Powell and Governor Bailey to better understand uh, the updated policy guidance from this week's central bank meetings. And we'll get into a little bit on the data that uh, came out this uh, this week for both uh, central banks in terms of um, uh, data, jobs data, as well as um, the uh, Bank of England holding races this, this uh, or last week. So the release of the UK GDP report for Q3 is expected to reveal flat to slightly negative growth. So um, again, there's a I think there's an opportunity to potentially short the uh, pound if data does come out as negative growth. The main economic data released from Japan will be the latest labour cash earnings report for September. Uh, at the last BOJ policy meeting, Governor Ueda reiterated that uh, more evidence of stronger wage growth remains the missing ingredient before they are confident to begin policy normalisation. And this is from MUFG. And for those of you who get those bank reports um, that we post in the Discord group, um, I have also updated the trading videos channel uh, with the latest um, weekly fundamental and technical analysis um, that goes into way more detail about the fundamentals and technicals than I do release on the um, on the YouTube uh, channel as well as previous weekly uh, week's videos. So I've got uh, the group call, which is about an hour and 32 minutes, hour and a half on the 2nd of November, plus some uh, some videos from the 30th and the 31st of October. So you can go to the uh, trading channels, uh, trading videos channel. Um, I've got some videos in there as well as, you know, previous week's videos, which I've got plenty of as well. Loads and loads and loads of previous videos. So you can go back and look at all of the uh, tutorials, everything that I've got um, in here. So starting off on the dollar index and the technicals and the dollar sold off this week um not because there was some sort of elliott wave um predicting that it would or anything like that no indicator it was really due to the fundamentals which is uh the us jobs data show broad cooling after run of surprise strength so october's payroll uh, rose 150,000 led by healthcare government and unemployment rate unexpectedly climbed to almost two year high so uh, us jobs uh, us job growth slowed by more than expected and the unemployment rate rose to an uh, to an almost two year high of 3.9% indicating that employers is strong demand for workers is beginning to cool so um, that's really the the main um, a takeaway from this is that there are now uh, cracks starting to show in you know the labor market which um, is like a canary in a coal mine almost for uh, the uh, for the US economy so here we see that uh, US jobs uh, data point to broad cooling in the labor market so uh, change in payrolls came below the 180,000 so jobs came in lower and we also have unemployment rate that actually came in higher so um you know with that being said um the us yields bond treasury bonds uh traders who are you know probably the smartest the most sensitive to uh central bank monetary policy um have now uh move up rate cut bets for the um for the us dollar and i want to talk more about this once we get 
to the UK and Europe and basically what it means in a narrative that will now develop. So for many of you who've been watching my videos for a while, um, uh, it, the, the, the narrative has really been about uh, who's going to be hiking, uh, you know, the longest and, and fastest, etc. Right now, the narrative is going to be changing to um, who's going to be cutting first because of the uh, not only the uh, economic cycle, but also uh, the interest rate uh, cycle as well. So bond, bond traders um, are, are literally now starting to uh, price in um, rate cuts. So it says here, one second, where was it now? Um, I had it here somewhere. Uh, it says here the employment, yep. Uh, softer than expected jobs data is the latest source of support for bond investors this week after relentless sell-off in recent months sent Treasury also the highest in more than a decade. The turnaround uh, started on Wednesday when the Treasury said it was slowing the pace of increases in sales of long maturity bonds. And as uh, Fed Chair Jerome Powell hinted, the tightening cycle may be over. And it said the bond rally came after a number of prominent investors, including Stan Drunkenmiller, Bill Ackman and Bill Gross, sounded alarm about the economy. Um, so the economy shrinking and it said here, where is it now? I did have it. Uh, right, here it is. Interest rate derivatives show that traders see only 20% chance of another Fed rate hike by January and have fully priced in a cut by June before the job report. Traders had expected the first interest rate cut in July. Interest rate swaps tied to the December 2024 meeting traded about 4.4%, etc., etc. So, um, you can pretty much see that being priced into July 2024 meeting. So the FedWatch tool, if you go to the top, you can see uh, that basically in June, um, there are there's an 85% chance of a cut currently. Um, and in May, it looks like, you know, 64% chance in uh, March. So you can see as we get further out to the year, rate cuts are being priced into the market or the probability is being um, is, is increasing. Now, um, so so with that being said, the dollar, I think overall technically has had its run. I think going past the 107s on the DXY is probably very unlikely unless they get a massive turnaround in the data. So um, we've, I've, I've say, I was saying to the group that I was expecting a, uh, really a pullback anyway, but um, didn't think that it would be a drastic pullback. But I do think that prices could come down to anywhere around the 104s to the 103 area uh, before looking to um, before the market actually prices in uh, those uh, rate uh, cuts. But the dollar, I think, has had its day in terms of, uh, you know, more upside uh, and the continuation of uh, the trend as prices you can see has been, you know, really rallying with no major pullback. And when you get those types of rallies since uh, since mid July, it's, it's inevitable that you will get a, a deeper pullback to some degree. It's just a matter, it's just a matter of really when. But looking at the overall uh, uh, GDP growth rate. The US is still really actually quite strong. Their data came out recently, which was uh, the the um, uh, October the 26th, and we had a 4.9 reading, which was actually above the consensus. So the consensus was actually for um, a 4.3% um, uh, increase in uh, GDP, but it came out at 4.9. So um, with that being said, I think the US, although, you know, the focus typically tends to be on the US in terms of, uh, you know, this this supposed economic crash that's supposed to be coming, um, they're probably best placed and we're going to look at Europe and, uh, and the UK a bit later. So um, in comparison, so for me, the dollar in the short term is... I can understand why you would want to short it. I think um, I think once the dust does start to settle, I'll still start to look to be a buyer of the uh, the dollar. Although I definitely um, can see why you'd want to get short um, uh, in the short in the short term. So looking at where we are now in terms of supply, you can look at that zone there um, in terms of supply. And you're not necessarily trading the dollar index; you're just looking at where where the dollar where the dollar is in comparison to other. Uh, currencies, and if you do want to be a seller of the dollar, and your you know and prices are up in this uh, supply zone, then um, 
uh, that makes sense to China uh, to look for any kind of short trades on any of the dollar crosses. So, or you know, vice versa in terms of uh, buy trades. Looking at the uh, dollar yen, and obviously with the dollar uh, looking to uh, weaken, at least in the short term, you can see the effect that it's having um, uh, on the dollar yen and dollar crosses period. So any pullbacks into these areas, if you're still looking to be a buyer of the dollar, right? is uh, are kind of buying opportunities um so yeah down to maybe the 147s and even when i think about it you can actually drag this demand zone down to the 106s and these are areas that you can look towards um support and resistance uh, within this wide area of uh, of demand that you may want to look towards uh buying in terms of a sell trade now we can start to because this was really kind of drawn from way back here and i'm going to probably do it from there yeah so um i think any pullbacks especially beyond i think this level here uh, anything beyond the uh 150 77s i think if prices come up here anything above there is a decent short if you are looking to obviously buy the uh the yen and um and sell the dollar. Uh, why would the yen be a buy? Really, because um, you're waiting for monetary policy uh, to change with the uh, the yen. They really next year should probably be the only central bank that is looking uh, to potentially hike rates and uh, reduce their negative um, interest rates. So whereas everyone else is like is looking like they are going to um, cut rates next year. So in fact, my trade for 2024, um, the big idea, or one of my big ideas is actually to look to buy the yen and uh, look to scale into the yen at least uh, from next year when it starts to look like wage inflation right is rising if it does as soon as it starts to rise that will be the trigger for really the uh, bank of japan to uh, look to change a monetary policy at the moment it's not looking fantastic so until that really starts to come into play i think the uh, the, the yen is going to be a very very nice uh, short looking at the uh, dollar cad uh, the 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 Canadian news was actually overshadowed this week. Uh, the um, the bank, uh, as I say, the Canadian dollar and the Canadian economy uh, posted meagre jobs gains and unemployment climbed to five point seven uh, percent. So the uh, their economy added uh, one uh, sorry seventeen thousand five hundred jobs, missing expectations for twenty five thousand job gain. And the Bank of Montreal sees McLean very much sidelined until 2024. So, um, again, not great in the jobs department and the economic department for uh, the, um, the Canadian dollar. And if you look at Canada's uh, growth rate, they're actually at zero. They're on that borderline to a potential contraction. So, again, you start to compare uh, the Canadian dollar and then you look at um, the United States and where they are. Yes, in the short term, you might think to yourself, well, yeah, short the dollar, but really, who's closer to a recession? And the recession is, technical recession is um, uh, two negative quarters, right? So two uh, negative growth quarters. So um, the United States will still have a long way to go before they're actually in a recession. So um, uh, where, whereas obviously the uh, uh, Canadian economy is a lot closer to a recession. So, um, yeah, I think for me out of the two, uh, I would still prefer to buy the uh, the the, uh, the uh, sorry US dollar. And so, yeah, but no one knows where the turning point will be, right? But you can look at this as maybe just a, an opportunity to buy the US dollar for cheaper. So any of these demand zones, I think, are decent. You can look for supply zones if you feel that prices uh, up here are decent shorting opportunities and there might be a change in fundamental fortunes for the Canadian economy uh, and the central bank, then I think the 1038s are a decent area to look for uh, some short trades. The New Zealand dollar, um, again, rallying, uh, blasting through this uh, this supply zone, which again was on the Friday. That was a jobs report. Does that mean the New Zealand dollar is a buy? Uh, for me, not at all. It just means that, uh, the, yes, the dollar is temporarily weaker, but ultimately um, there could be some nice, decent uh, shorting opportunities once the dust settles. There's some really nice levels in and around 
the uh, 160, 60, uh, 6 level um, and just be just below that as well into this supply zone. Although it's not the freshest area of supply, um, it's been touched once already. Um, I think a decent area or maybe the potential for a stop hunt above that area is going to be nice for a uh, potential short. If you are looking to buy the US dollar, if you're looking to buy the New Zealand dollar for whatever reason, then you're really looking for prices to pull back all the way down to the 58 uh, 40 cent area so that would be where the first demand zone is right there um the pound and the pound again is rallied really based off of <coughs> the uh, the weakness in the us data but of course there is us uh, uk data this week coming out so it should be right here gdp growth rate right uh, quarter on quarter and again it's forecasted actually as uh, being minus one percent so they're looking like they're going into the the month for month and a quarter on quarter looking like they're going into the contraction uh, side of things and um, the bank of england actually uh, ended up holding rates um, uh, on i think it was thursday so but the bank of england's bleak uk outlook lifts bets on sharp rate cuts in 2024 so uh, they were quite dovish when it comes to it uh, came to the economy and um, the Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey uh, may insist that it's much too early to be thinking about rate cuts, but financial markets have other ideas. So uh, the betting uh, by investors marks a sharp contrast with the message Bailey repeated in seven interviews and press conferences after the decision. So, um, you know, basically the uh, Andrew Bailey is basically saying, no, everything's okay. Uh, we're not going to be cutting rates anytime soon. But, um, uh, the, you know, the, uh, the the traders are thinking to themselves, well, it doesn't look great for your economy if you're looking to potentially, uh, 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 your economy is looking to contract, right? And you can start to see, uh, again, how close to contraction, the contraction uh, numbers that the uh, UK economy is in, right? So 0.2%. Um, and if the um, quarter on quarter is projected to be minus 0 0.1 and it comes out as minus uh, 0.1 or even uh, lower than that, then um, it's going to be very difficult for the Bank of England to hike rates in that environment. Of course, they have a mandate to try and get inflation down to the, their 2% target, but um, a contracting economy will bring inflation down anyway. So, um, and then the next phase is actually to potentially look to support the economy by hike, um, sorry, by cutting rates um, if they go into the contraction phase. So, um, again, not looking great for the, uh, for, the, for the UK at the moment, although we've seen this, you know, this massive rally uh, on the Friday, based off of dollar, you know, dollar weakness uh, or some sentiment weakness, um, this could easily start to reverse, um, you know, down to maybe these one two twos, one two ones, if the um, the UK economy comes out maybe worse than expected, right? So there's that. So again, you've got several areas to look for short trades, or if you're looking for a long trade. Um, prices pull back to that, you know, one to one uh, five area. You can look for some short, um, long trades there. Uh, looking at the pound yen and the pound yen again rallying based off of really. Um, uh, well, I think anyway. I think it's just taking out a lot of stops. But um, uh, you know, this this as it's rallying higher, and you're seeing the potential for negative data being forecast. Um, that's what makes me feel that, you know, this is basically just drawing traders in to go long for them to basically look for, you know, some short trades, right? Because tr pretty much, you know, retail typically don't look at, you know, the fundamentals or don't necessarily abide by the fundamentals. And um, and so this is a great area to look for short trades in anticipation of uh, data coming out that doesn't really support a, uh, a, a pound buy, right? So nice uh, pullback, um, there but of course forecasts can be wrong and if they are wrong and prices pull back into a demand zone and let's say the data comes out and it's better than expected right then i think that is going to be a very nice zone to look for uh, the potential for a uh, a buy 
So you've got those areas within that demand zone that you can look towards. In fact, even the top of that zone now, you can see areas of support and resistance. So pull back into that zone on a lower time frame. Let's say you go down to an hourly or something like that and look for these areas to look for a potential buy trades. But um, yeah, um, not too sure what's going to happen on that. No one is, of course, but it, it, the forecast is is for a uh, the contraction then um, the fact that it's rallying is, uh, yeah, I think it's just drawing traders in to go long. Um, looking at the euro dollar and the euro dollar, um, you know, we've obviously seen a rally on that, on the euro, but not for any other reason other than the dollar being weak. Um, technically, I do, you know, expect, I did kind of expect to pull back anyway, um, especially when we, when you see, you know, over the year how, you know, how much the uh, euro dollar has fallen. Now we've pulled back to a decent zone, the 107.30s towards the uh, 50 areas, 107.50s. Um, and with the, I guess with the um, with the euro area, uh, we did get some data as well, which was talking about eurozone inflation sinks to two year low as economy contracts as well. So um, they're in an even worse situation in terms of uh, the economic contraction. Uh, but we'll get into that in a sec. So consumer prices up 2.9% from a year ago in October, and it was estimated at 3.1%. So they're actually closer to their 2% their target in terms of uh, their mandate. Uh, we're talking about the ECB here. And uh, third quarter GDP fell 0.1% from previous quarter as rate hikes weigh, right? Because rate hikes typically contract uh, your economy. And so um, we go to the euro area GDP, and you can see now that the third quarter data, in fact, came out um, as uh, being minus uh, 0.1. So you're seeing, in fact, the effect of rate hikes in the economy, borrowing and lending costs are more expensive. Um, and that does have the effect of contracting the economy. So um, Europe, I think, out of you know the majors, if you're looking at you know the pound and you're looking at the dollar, I think Europe are in a worst uh, worst situation. So you know, looking at the technicals now, um, I think for me the uh, the euro could be a decent short, but again, it really just does depend upon um, uh, the, I guess short term sentiment because there was a lot of traders who were looking to kind of short the dollar anyway. But um, if you're looking at both, you know, all these currencies in a straight fight, the dollar should, you know, win out. Now, I have no idea whether prices will reverse around here or maybe go up to the 109s. But I think the 109s would definitely be, you know, a ceiling in terms of, um, you know, value. And um, if prices don't reverse around here, then I think definitely the 109s is going to be the zone to look for uh, some short trades if of course you are uh, your bias is to short the uh, the euro against the dollar if you're going the other way and you think the euro could rally based off of maybe some sort of risk on sentiment coming into the market because that is possible as well as maybe china growing but china is still struggling um and maybe some de-escalation in with the with the uh, israel and palestine um uh, uh, you know conflict then, um, yeah, I think any pullbacks into maybe this type of demand zone, the 105.80s at the moment, is going to be a decent uh, uh, area to look for potential uh, buyers for the euro. But although um, short term wise, I can see why, you know, traders are going to be bearish on the dollar. Um, will that be, you know, will that be short lived or will that, you know, continue prices will rally for the next, you know, two, three, four months, I'm very doubtful that it will. So um, if I was looking to still buy or sell um, any of these currencies, my bias would still be to look for dollar buys um, at these areas. If not, you know, the 106, or sorry, 107.50s to 108s. And then if not, then the 108.80s to uh, 109.40s are going to be really the main area for me to look for potential shorts. Of course, unless there is data supporting, um, you know, maybe a euro buy. Uh, looking at the euro yen and... Um, I was saying in the private members group, I actually do think that this area here is actually quite a decent, uh, looking like a decent setup uh, for a short trade. Um, I think from now is going to be quite nice. Um, traders will know this as a bit of a stop hunt 
in that level there. So um, I do think any 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 moves to the downside are decent now. Um, in terms of a supply zone at the moment, the nearest supply zone. There hasn't been a supply zone up uh, this high since, uh, well, not, not for the last uh, 10 years. So to go short right now, it would have to really be based off of an, an intraday setup. So for now, um, I can't really draw any kind of supply on there. But uh, the guys know on the intraday um, what you'd be looking for. As again, I mentioned it actually in the setups in the uh, weekly video on the 4th of uh, November so yesterday's video basically um, that I put in the uh, in the group but if you are a buyer of the euro for whatever reason then I think a pullback into the 15830s or uh, uh, the um, is going to be the, the the first area you want to look to buy the uh, euro against uh, the yen Aussie dollar and uh, Aussie dollar looking very strong. The Australian dollar, again, I think uh, the RBA are really the only bank uh, currently that are looking to uh, high rates at the moment. Everyone else is pretty much holding. Um, and the Japanese yen, of course, based off of wage data. But um, if they continue to high rates, you could, you're likely to see prices move to the upside, whether they go like that or whether they kind of pull back and then move to the upside. Um, I think the market, uh, hasn't necessarily fully priced in rate hikes, but they probably will start to this week. But if they if they actually hold rates this week, um, then you can actually see a big drop. Matter of fact, you might see a big drop in that, and prices may start to actually come back down to the uh, 6370s. So this is where you're looking at potential. Uh, um, uh, buyers, if you're looking at buying the Australian dollar, or if you're looking at you know any kind of short trades, maybe taking profit around here. But um, but yeah, it, I think it all depends upon what happens on it is Tuesday. I think it is in the UK. Yep. So it's Tuesday evening um, or Tuesday morning, matter of fact, at three three o'clock, and we've come up to a very interesting area. So let's see what happens. So again, the expectation. Um, the forecast is for a hike, and if the RBA don't hike, then I think really the the, uh, the downside is going to be a very nice trade. Uh, Australian dollar, Japanese yen, and again, uh, blasting through these supply zones because of the expected rate hike. And um, I do think we do have another uh, supply zone somewhere around here. Uh, and so if prices do come up that high, I think actually that would be uh, a decent uh, sell as well. Reason being is because um, I think after this rate hike for, for, for the Australian dollar, I think maybe somewhere around here, maybe the limit before prices start to uh, drop as we go into next year and the uh, Bank of Japan start to actually high crates so um if obviously they get the data but um but yeah i think for now any buying on the uh, on the yen is a bit is going to be a tricky one um but if you're looking to buy the australian dollar again i don't think there's any opportunity now this has gone way too high uh you can be a, you can be a buyer at the uh, at the highs but i prefer to be a buyer uh, on pullbacks and look at you know value but the nearest really kind of demand zone buy would be all the way down at these 90 cent areas so if you're looking for prices to really kind of pull back to you know all the way down here before looking at a long trade i'm not saying that it can't happen but um in in the short term i can't really imagine it's happening unless it, again um you know you get a, a rate hold right from uh, the from the bank of australia and finally we have uh, gold and so gold still holding up in a risk off environment um any pullbacks down to uh, these areas i was saying last week are going to be definitely um bargain areas so or bargain prices or decent prices to look for uh, long trades and so um yeah, I think the path of least resistance is to the upside, especially with risk off the dollar kind of cooling off as well in terms of uh, in terms of strength. So this is where you might start to now see a return of, you know, uh, if the dollar starts to decline in value, then you start to see uh, gold actually increase in value. Um, before we were having actually gold um, and or for a little period, gold and the dollar actually both increase in value at the same time because they're both risk considered risk off um, assets 
the dollar is considered a risk of currency and gold is considered a risk of uh, assets, so uh, precious metal. And so there are times where you can have both the gold and, um, and the US dollar actually appreciate or devalue at the same time. But I think now that gold might, um, you know, heading potentially into a recession cycle um, and, you know, rate cuts coming next year, this could put a nice, um, you know, fire in, uh, in gold's return to potential all-time highs and even beyond that. So I think any pullbacks are going to be nice opportunities to buy overall, like in the medium to long term. Uh, anyways, guys, that's it for this week. Uh, I hope you have a great trading week and uh, take care. All the best.